In the last tutorial, I showed you how to make a bow, but a bow without arrows is pretty useless. It's kind of hard to hit an enemy or any other target for that matter if you don't have arrows to actually hit that target with. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up a very simple arrow that goes along with the bow that we made in our previous tutorial and you're able to hit targets with. But before we jump into that, I have just a little announcement to make. Now I'm putting together a second channel. I want to be clear right now that VR Playground is not going anywhere. I'm planning to continue putting out tutorials, guides, and even the occasional reactionary videos that I've done up until this point. My intention behind doing this is I want to make sure that VR Playground is filled to the brim with tutorials, guides, and basically a lot of videos that are more beneficial to developers who are looking to develop their own games and applications. The second channel is going to be called A Rift in Reality, and over there is going to be a lot more casual than what I do here on VR Playground. Over on A Rift in Reality, I'm going to be doing a lot more unboxings, reviews, and even some experimental videos in order to show what VR is capable of now and what it can possibly be capable of in the future. Now, while I don't have any videos available yet over on A Rift in Reality, I expect by the time that this tutorial goes out, I will have already begun doing some recording for some videos for that second channel. So if you want to get subscribed right now, I'll have a link to that second channel up here in the top right so you can go and get subscribed and be ready for when those new videos start coming out. I hope to see you over there and with that let's jump right into the video. Alright, so let's go ahead and have a look at the arrow. Um, I want to note one quick thing, uh, just in case you guys call it out right here or in the uh, tutorial section of this video. Um, the string for some reason is not visible. I don't know why. Um, I. I actually ended up installing Unreal Engine 5 Preview and uninstalling Unreal Engine 5 Early Access. Um, best I can tell, this is some kind of bug that happened somewhere in that conversion. <laughs> That's my best guess at, at the moment. Um, the string is still there, and I can confirm that. You'll see it when I pull back the arrow. It's just for some reason, when it's when Bo's just sitting here, the string is just not there, and I'm not entirely sure why that is. Um, but anyways, let me go and show you what the arrow looks like. So you can see, I can go ahead and grab it and pull it back. You can hopefully see right there, there's the string again, um, j just as I had promised. The string is still there, it's just for some reason not visible in all cases. And I can go ahead and fire it off into the uh, abyss out there. Um, I did not set this so it'll actually like stop when it collides with the environment. Just because I wanted to leave that bit open, there's a lot of other use cases for arrows. For example, maybe you want to despawn for an explosion. Um, maybe you do want it to stop. Maybe you want it to do something like this. So you can actually see if I hit the ground, it'll actually go sliding off. Um, but you can, there's a lot of different uses for arrows. So I decided to leave that part open. Um, I did also set up. So um, if if your hands are a little bit closer, it actually won't go flying as much. So you can kind of see if I kind of shoot it off over there. It still goes, you know, a distance, just not as far. And if I pull it way further back, th then it has more force obviously applied to it and it'll go further out. Um, but you actually need to pull back on it in order for it to fly out like that. So that's that's how this bone arrow is going to work. So let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial and I can show you exactly how all this works. Now that you've seen how this arrow is going to function, let's go ahead and jump right into it. To start, let's create a new blueprint that I'm going to call arrow. Open up this blueprint and we will need to give this a static mesh. I also want to note right now that you can choose to make this the root component if you would like. I, however, am going to be leaving this as a child of the root component so that way we can scale the size of this arrow static mesh and we can rotate onto its side which you may or may not need to do depending on your static mesh. In this static mesh, you also need to give it some mesh. I will use the pillar 50 by 500 for this example. This is rather big, so I'm going to go and scale this down to 0.15 on all, axi on all axis. Then I will rotate our mesh so it's on its side. I also want to note that you need to make sure the origin of your actor needs to be on one end of the mesh. That is because that this mesh is going to be following our hand and so we need one end of it to be able to follow that hand. We can't have the origin point right in the middle of our mesh, otherwise we will need to do some sort of offset, which I'm not going to bother with in this video. In order for this to work, you also need to make sure that your mesh is capable of simulating physics. 
Now, this pillar actually does have a few issues with it that's going to prevent us from simulating physics. So I'm actually going to go ahead and open this so we can make a few modifications to the mesh itself. Go ahead and open up the pillar. And in here, there's a single issue that we're going to run into when simulating physics. Go into the details panel, look up collision complexity, and then when simulating physics, this will currently give an error if we leave it at this default state. To fix this, I'm going to change this value to project default. While we're here, I'll also go and make sure that the pillar has a box collision as well. This isn't necessary, but if you want to make sure that your arrow is able to collide with the environment, you definitely need to make sure that your mesh has some sort of collision enabled. Once you've made those changes to the pillar, go ahead and head back into the air so we can make a couple more quick changes to our static mesh to make sure everything's going to work just fine. We also need to make sure that the collisions are set correctly for physics. Here, simply make sure that collision enabled is set to collision enabled. Then I also recommend saying world dynamic and pawn to overlap. This isn't necessary in all cases, but I make sure this is set so neither the bow or the player can interfere with the arrow's collision when we fire it off. Now we can jump into the event graph. I'm going to start by removing all the events that are already here since we're not going to be using any of these. And then I'm going to create a custom event called fire. I'm also going to make sure that this has a single input and I'm going to call this multiplier. For this example, I'm going to set this input to a real. Now I want to note right now that I'm using Unreal Engine 5 preview. So if you are in Unreal Engine 4 or Unreal Engine 5 early access, you may not see this option. In preview, floats were changed to real. So if you don't find real, set this input to a float instead. Then we will go ahead and grab our stack mesh, set this to simulate physics, and add a force to the static mesh. Now, just a note, physics needs to be simulated before we're able to add any force to the static mesh, which is why we do everything in this specific order. As you can see, we need a force value in order to actually add a force to our static mesh. For this, I'm going to get the up vector from our static mesh. You may need a different vector if your mesh is different. Then we multiply this up vector by the multiplier that we're getting from our custom event. And that will give us our force. The multiplier will be used to determine the force of our arrow, while the up vector determines the direction in this example. And that's all that we need to do for the arrow. Next, we're going to go ahead and jump back into the bow that we made in the previous tutorial. In our bow, go ahead and jump into the event graph if you don't already have it open, and we will start on the event grab. Here we need to spawn our arrow when our secondary hand grabs the bow. It's actually quite simple. All we will need to do is spawn an actor, set the class to arrow, then spawn transform is entirely up to you. It really won't make any difference in this example. I will just go and split the struct pin so we don't get arrows. Then, just for safety, I'll make sure this arrow always spawns. And I'm going to make sure that we have this arrow stored as a variable so we can access this later. Next, let's go ahead and move on to the event release. Before we can set our secondary motion controller to null, we need to get the distance between both of our controllers to store for our magnitude later on. To do this, I'm going to grab the references to each of our motion controllers, get the world location of each of them, then find the distance between these two vectors. Then before we store this value, I'm going to go and multiply this by 10,000 and store this value as a variable called multiplier. The 10,000 multiplication is actually for a reason here. This stored value will be fed into the fire event that we created in the arrow. However, the distance between our hands is not nearly far enough for us to be able to see our arrow fly. 
So we multiply this value by 10,000 to increase this value and make sure our arrow will in fact move when we release it. Finally, we can jump into our event tick to finish off our bow and arrow. To do this, I'm going to follow the is valid for our secondary motion controller and go all the way to the end of our blueprint code here. I'll come all the way to the end here, grab a reference to our arrow, and just as a precaution, I'm going to check to make sure that it is in fact valid. If it's not, we're going to bring the execution node down to reset the do once that we also made in the previous tutorial. However, if this is valid, we will set the actual location and rotation. The location is going to come from our secondary motion controller, and we will simply just get its world location. The rotation we actually already found, you may find that you need to make some modifications if your arrow is set in a slightly different orientation. However, if your arrow is set perfectly fine like mine is, we can go and grab the rotation that we used earlier for the bow in order to set its rotation when we have both our hands holding it. Once the location and rotation is set, we're going to again reset that do once node by bringing it down. Now that we know our arrow does actually follow the bow, we can now fire it off once it is properly timed. To do this, we'll come down here to the do once that we have reset up until this point and that we set up in our previous tutorial. Then go all the way to the end here, and we're going to again just do a double check and make sure our arrow is valid. Then assuming it is, we're going to run the fire event and pass in the multiplier variable that we saved in the event release. Then of course, we're going to go and set that variable back to null, just as a precaution again. Then compile and save everything and the bow and arrow is now complete. And with that, we have a very simple bow and arrow that we're able to use in any number of ways. Whether we leave it as a floppy bow and arrow just for our own amusement, whether we stop it once it hits a target just so we can reuse it again, or if we despawn it for an explosion and destroying that arrow altogether. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe button down below. And I also want to give a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters who you should see over here on the right hand side. And with that, I'll see you in the next reality.